And everybody said? Amen. Amen. All right, Junior Church it can be dismissed at this time. Let's go ahead and word of prayer uh, while they, the kids are being dismissed. And uh, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your love and grace. We thank you for the, the music, Father, the times of uh, worship to you. We thank you for it. We thank you for this country. <clears throat> and thank you for the, the individuals who have, uh, in a lot of ways, <clears throat> laid the, the stepping stones for this country to, 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 to have liberty here. Uh, Father, we thank you for them. Uh, we know not all of our history in the United States is perfect. But, Father, we, we thank you for the, those individuals who uh, have made a difference. We thank you for the Christian liberty uh, that we have, that we can come to church uh, freely uh, to worship you. There's so many other countries uh, in the entire world that do not have the freedoms that we do have. And uh, we thank you uh, that we have them here, that we can gather together and to uh, pray together, to uh, sing together and to read your word together, Father. We thank you for that. We pray for our missionaries, Father, in other countries, as we already said, and we think of them, and we pray for their ministries, and we pray that they can share the glorious gospel uh, to the lost uh, where they're at. And we pray, Father, we can, with the liberty we have here in the United States, that we can uh, share the, the glorious gospel uh, to the lost as well. And uh, we have the liberty to do so. And so, Father, just... Uh, Help us to be bold in our faith and to share it. Be with our children as they uh, learn from your word together and be with the teachers as well. In Jesus' name, amen. <clears throat> All right, go ahead and turn your Bibles to the book of Titus. We'll be in Titus today, chapter, uh, chapter 3. Titus, chapter 3. My title today is Don't Forget It. And Linda wanted to... Be Linda, the, our, one of our secretaries in the office, said, Don't forget that I'm doing dinner for my family, so you have to end on time. So, I'll do my best. But uh, that's not what I'm going to be preaching about today. Titus chapter 3, verse uh, 1 to 8. Let's read it together. Put them in mind to be subject to principalities and powers, to obey magistrates, to be ready to every good work. To speak evil of no man, to be no brawlers, but gentle, showing all meekness unto all men. For we ourselves also were sometimes foolish, disobedient, deceived, serving divers' lusts and pleasures, living in malice and envy, hateful and hating one another. But after that, the kindness and love of God our Savior toward man appeared, not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to His mercy He saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost, which He shed on us abundantly through Jesus Christ our Savior, that being justified by His grace, we should be made heirs, of, heirs according to the hope of eternal life. This is a faithful saying, and these things I will have, that thou affirm constantly, that they which have believed in God might be careful to ma maintain good works, these things are good and profitable unto men. On July 4th in 1776, the Second Continental Congress unanimously adopt, adopted a Declaration of Independence to, an, to announce the colony's separation from the Kingdom of Great Britain. The birthday of the free world, America, that we live in, was born. In 1870, Congress passed an act establishing Independence Day, New Year's Day, Christmas Day, and Thanksgiving, but we're going to highlight all this Independence Day, okay, as a holiday in the District of Columbia. And the reason why they did that is we set a day to celebrate so we reflect upon our country and the freedom that we have and everything that went on and the history of it. We do this so we do not forget it. That's why we have these holidays. If we forget it, and take our freedom for granted, we will lose our liberties. So with this freedom that we still have, let us also be reminded how a child of God is to act. In our passage today, we will see three things that we should not forget. And again, to become a child of God is placing your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and what He did for you on that cross. That through His death, His burial, and resurrection, He paid the price for your sins and belief upon that. You can have forgiveness of sins and eternal life. And upon belief, you are indwelt with the Holy Spirit of God. And we'll talk about that as well in this passage. 
But as a child of God, we're to, God wants us to walk in newness of life. He wants us to uh, walk and uh, do good and, and be a great ambassador. And we have the blueprints for today. Okay, so as a child of God, we have three things that we should not forget. And it doesn't matter if we're in the United States, with the freedom that we can go anywhere, any place right now in the United States and still preach the Bible. You can still carry your Bible. You can still declare yourself to be a Christian. Some may make fun of you, but if your hurt, feelings get hurt, I'm sorry. But in other countries, when you say, I'm a Christian, or I'm a missionary, or I'm a pastor, you will get killed or thrown in jail. Okay? And so either way, there are three things. And so no matter what, again, Paul, when he's writing to, in these epistles in 2 Timothy, he's in, where's, where's Paul at? Prison, right? Rome was not freedom. Rome was under dictatorship. Okay? And here's a blueprint that Paul's telling Titus to tell, to tell the people of Crete. Okay, this is how you're to live your life. With freedom or without freedom. Okay? And so there are three things that, we, uh, that you can pull from this passage here, from these verse, uh, to verse 8, that we cannot forget. So don't forget it. First and foremost, we need to not forget. Three things we shouldn't forget are, is our behavior as Christians, our appreciation walk, I like that one, and the ripple effect. The first and foremost, I want to talk about our behavior. You got the sad face, the so so sad, you know, not sure what I am today, and then what? The happy face, right? And depending if you're a morning person, it depends where you're at, right? If you're Sean, you're very much happy. If you're me, you're very much sad, especially when allergies come up around too. But, but again, our, uh, how we behave in life matters. And so we're not to forget it. It does matter. Verse 1 and verse 2 speak upon this. So let's read it together. We already said this, but put them in mind to be subject to principalities and powers, to obey magistrates, to be ready to at what? Every good work. And again, I want to say that our behavior does matter, and it's not because I said it. It's because who? God says it. Okay, the words that you have in front of you today, God's holy word, or the verses I put on the screen are God's words. Okay, they're his words. And again, second, if you want to turn to 2 Timothy, you're already in Titus, go to, go to 2 Timothy, it's to the left, 3, 16 and 17. Hear from God's word. These are his words, they're God-breathed. And it tells you, 2 Timothy 3, 16, all scripture is given by the inspiration of God, God-breathed inspiration is what it is, that in, in, and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto what? All good works. God's word is to convict us, to teach us, to help us produce good fruit. Okay, and, that, and again, reading God's Word, if we're more transformed by the renewing of your mind and less transformed by the conforming of this worldly system, okay, a lot of ways you're going to be uh, acting the way God wants you to act as a dear child. And I want to point this out, is that these are God's words. And again, they're, they're God-breathed, and God used holy men. Okay, 2 Peter 1, 20 and 21 on, is on the screen for you. Know this, folks, knowing this first. That no prophecy of the scripture is of what? Any private interpretation. For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as what? They were moved by the Holy Ghost. So the words that you have in front of you are inspired, they're God's words, and they're for you and I to learn and from. And so when we walk through these doors here, or not just walking through these doors, but maybe you sit around your kitchen table, or maybe you have your own little prayer time and Bible study, maybe through your phone app, Bible app, whatever you want to, whatever, okay? The fact is, how you approach God, okay, is what you're going to get out of Him, okay? How you approach His Word is what you're going to get out of it. Hebrews 4.12 speaks of this. For the Word of God is what? Quick. And powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even the dividing asunder of soul and spirit, and of the joints and marrow, and is a, is a what? 
discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. The Word of God reads you as you read it, and God knows where you're at in your life. And, it, you know, and so each and every single Sunday morning, Sunday school, when our kids are in junior church or VBS or Grace Kids Camp, and when we preach God's Word, each child, each of us, is spiritually at a different point of our life. And God's Word is going to impact you differently. And so I'm preaching a message today, and I'm preaching, obviously, God's Word, and I'm also preaching to myself, and it's going to impact me differently than it's going to impact you. It's going to impact you differently than it's going to impact your wife, or your husband, or your friend, or your next-door neighbor. Okay? God's Word is powerful. It's the living Word. Okay? And God's Word, you can learn it. He, he, God teaches us through His Word. He will teach us what we, meet, what we need and maybe not what we want. Okay? Because sometimes, again, he, he, what's it? Discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Have you ever gone to church and you said, ha, I said this a couple times. No, I'm just kidding. My neighbor needs to hear this. My mother needs to hear this. My son needs to hear this. Or I said, my mother-in-law needs to hear this, for sure. But no, I need to hear this. Because God works in me, he's working through his word to me, individually. Okay, And what I need is what God's going to feed me, because he, he's the discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Do you know my thoughts? No. Praise God. Right? Do you know the intents of my heart? No, you don't. Do I know yours? But who does? God. And so he's working in you that way, through his word. And so I can't understand God's word. Listen, if you're a child of God, if you've accepted Christ as your personal Savior, you have the Holy Spirit of God inside of you, and he teaches you his word. He really does. 1 Corinthians 12, 2, 12 and 13 tells you, Now we have received... Not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God. That we might know the things that are freely given to us of what? Of God. I love that last section of that verse. The things that are what? Freely given to us of God. Okay? But how we get things from God is through His Word, folks. Let's read verse 13. Which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing what? Spiritual things with spiritual. God's word is teaching you and I. And he, wants to, he teaches us he, and he, he's going to guide us through his word. That's why faith cometh by hearing and hearing from what? The word of God. His word will convict us. And his word will teach us how we are to behave. And in today's passage, okay, we have God through the Apostle Paul. Again, he's the dispenser. Okay, the, the spokesperson of the dispensation of the grace of God, Romans through Philemon, is for the body of Christ members. You and I have accepted Christ as your personal Savior. You're a body of Christ, saint. You're part of the body. One body made up of many members. Okay, and you're all identified through the precious blood of Jesus Christ. And Christ is the head of the body of Christ. And, he, and Paul is the dispenser. He's laying out the blueprints, how we're to conduct our lives as we function in this earth until the Lord comes back for the body of Christ. But again, he tells, he, he's, he's writing Titus to tell the Crete people uh, some things here. So we're, we're going to look at some of these, thing, these things. And we already read verse 1, but he tells us to be what? Subject or to submit to rulers and authorities. And this is really tough to do sometimes, right? Okay, maybe hard things to do right here, okay? But government officials, employers, and any other person of authority should be the recipients of our every good work. That's what it says there in God's Word, okay? In the end, you're serving God in all things, okay? Romans 13 speaks about that, you know, that the powers to be are ordained by God. And we're, we're to be in Philippians, I mean, Philippians, 1 Timothy you know, first of all things, we're to be praying for what? Who? Government. Right? There, these individuals are in these positions. It doesn't matter if you like them or not like them. 
It doesn't matter, again, we're to pray for them, not ta- talk badly on them. In a lot of ways, the world, you know, again, it, it, it does. I, we label, unfortunately, in the United States, and maybe other countries as well, we label everybody with the R or with the D, right? You're an R or a D. You know what that is? Republican or Democrat, right? Who's a Republican? No, don't shake your hands. No, I don't care if you're a Democrat either. I don't care if you're independent. Okay? All that matters is what? You're a what? Child of God. Right? If you're a child of God, God gives His Word, His blueprints on how we're to live our life. He gives His blueprints what's right and what's wrong. Not the Republican, not the Democrat, and not the Independent. No politician should tell you how to live your life. Only God Almighty should tell you how to live your life. And His Word tells you today that we're to be, again, put them in mind to be subject to principalities and powers, to obey magistrates, to be ready to every good work. Okay, you're serving, again, that's that area. It's not just politicians, anyone who's above you, your boss. Anybody has a position of authority. They should be the recipients of every good work of yours. And it's not the fact that you're serving them. You're serving the risen Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, where He has you in your life. Colossians 3, 23 and 24 says, And whatsoever ye do, do it what? Hardly as to the Lord and not unto men, knowing that of the Lord ye shall receive the reward of inheritance, for ye serve who? The Lord Jesus Christ. You see, in our life, where you're at, we give the world a reflection of our Master. Okay? We are His representatives. We're the ambassadors for Christ. Okay? So, again, we're to be subject to submit to rulers and authorities. Our, again, another way how we're to behave ourselves is, that, is our approach to people around us. Look at verse 2 tells us. To speak evil of no man. To be no brawlers, but gentle, showing all meekness unto who? All men, not just the people you choose. Our approach to people do matter. We're not to speak evil, okay? We're not, again, we're not to speak evil of each other. And one of the things I always say, it's like a white lie, or you could say it that way, but you ever hear of gossiping a lot, right? The tongue is vicious, right? James, too, talk, and James talks about that some, too. But look at what the book of Proverbs tells you. I love Proverbs, by the way. Okay? He, what, what? Hideth hatred with lying, what? Lips. He did others slander is a what? Fool. In the multitude of words there wanteth not sin, but he that refraineth his lips is what? Wise. Read a verse of Proverbs a day. It'll help guide your life, I'm telling you. So we're not to speak evil of anybody, okay? And, and another thing is we're not to be brawlers. A brawler is someone who is contentious, someone who looks for an argument. You know some of those people? Maybe you're one. I don't know. You're like watch a football game and you start arguing with the TV? Don't be a brawler at football. You're just yelling at TV. They can't hear you. Now, this also is someone, I will say this, uh, someone with a different uh, opinion is not a brawler. So you can't label someone a brawler when they have a difference of opinion, okay? You can't do that at all. But someone who is trying to nitpick or to get under someone's skin or, or always has to be right, that's when, you know, that leads down the pathway of being a brawler. Now, sometimes this takes place, well, obviously, being a brawler takes place with what? High emotions, right? You ever see that? High emotions get people going, right? Yeah. You want to, you want to talk about politics right now? You want to talk about our freedoms? You want to talk about this and that? Our high emotions get going, right? Okay. High emotions. And high emotions, when that happens, the guard gets left down And the willingness to take jabs or the willingness to be contentious occurs. So the best thing to do if if you find yourself in this situation is to stop. Pray and then apologize. And then don't repeat it and then do better, okay? And then do better. And if you have the urge to speak evil or, or you feel like you're becoming a brawler, do this. Bless someone instead. 
Okay? Instead of being a brawler, instead of speaking evil of someone, maybe someone just really gets on your nerves, bless that individual. Pray for that individual. Pray for yourself as well. But the issue, God gives you an answer as well. How, how do you not do these things? Well, you keep reading. But gentle, showing all meekness unto all men. We're to be gentle. How many of us are gentle? Meaning, be, meaning be, to be appropriate or, or patient. We're to be showing all meekness, which is gentleness by implication, humility. Okay? 2 Corinthians 10.1, Paul writes... Yeah. I have it on the screen wrong, but 1 Corinthians 7, Now I, Paul, myself, beseech you by the meekness and gentleness of what? Who? Christ. Who in the presence and base among you, but being absent and bold towards you. He mentions the Lord Jesus Christ. He goes, I, Paul, myself, beseech you. I, I, I beckon, I, I beg you by the meekness and gentleness of Christ. Obviously, the Lord Jesus Christ is the greatest and best example he showed humility on the cross. He, thought, he saw a need of you and I, and he paid the price on that cross for you and I. Okay? He, he showed that. But in the Bible, and I know I mentioned this before, and this is not Bible trivia, but it can be. Um, but what man of God was the meekest? Does anybody know that? What man of God is the me was the meekest? Who? Moses, there you go. I heard Sharon. Who was the other person? Someone else, John, my dad. Numbers 12.3 tells you this. Now the man, Moses, was very meek above all men which are upon the face of the earth. This is not my opinion. This is God's holy word. When the, again, think about this with Moses' life. Okay, what makes a meek individual? Okay, this is why I got, you know, Paul tells you in Romans... That those things that, that were, you know, in times past, you can learn from them, you can glean upon them. They're not directly to you, okay? The promises of the nation of Israel are not to the body of Christ. But you can learn from their mistakes and you can learn from individuals. And Moses, okay, in his lifetime, think of this, when the people constantly complained about his leadership, he did not retaliate. When his own brother and sister jealously questioned his authority... He interceded for them to, minif to minimize God's punishment to them. But as a parent was his, 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 was a, as a parent was his meekness before his brethren, his humility before his God was even more profound. And so Moses is a great example uh, of someone being meek. But again, to speak evil of no man, to be no brawlers, but and, and again, we're not to do that, but we're to be gentle, we're showing all meekness unto who? All men. I like that. Unto all men. Now, I will say this. Verse 9, 10, and 11, Paul does address someone you're, you are not to put up with. Okay? Look at verse 9, 10, and 11 real quick. You are not to put up with this, this, uh, uh, this ludicrous stuff here. So 9, 10, and 11. But avoid foolish questions and genealogies and contentions and striving about the law, for they are what? unprofitable in vain. A man that is a heretic after the first and second admonition, what's he say? Reject. Okay? Knowing that he that is such is subverted and sinneth be, being condemned of who? Of himself. Condemning himself. Paul doesn't put it, you know, he, he says, you know, after the second time, reject him. He's, he's, more, he's more worried about his agenda and not what, is, what God's agenda is. Uh, what, what he's to be worried about. And so either way, we're to, we're to show gentleness, we're to show humility, and, and again, uh, to all men. You and I and individuals we run into on the streets. We're to do this without someone watching over us, by the way. Uh, not when mom and dad tell you to, or when uh, grandma or grandpa tells you to. Okay, you're to, you're, to, you're to live this life without someone watching over you. And ultimately, always remembering that no matter what, we don't have time to go there, God is watching, and even so are, his, so are the angels as well. Okay? So don't forget our behavior does matter. And we, can be the, and we can be the light or encouragement to the lost and each other when we appreciate all we have now. Okay, so the other thing we need to do is not to, not to forget, okay, don't forget who we are in Christ, and don't forget our appreciation walk, 
Okay? Why do I say that? I love our appreciation walk. Because we should be walking out of appreciation of everything that we have. Verse 3 talks about our past. Our past without Christ in our life. Okay? If we started appreciating everything we have through, through the Lord Jesus Christ, life would not be so miserable every day. Look what we had. Verse 3, For we ourselves also are sometimes foolish, disobedient, deceived, serving divers' lusts and pleasures, living in malice and envy, hateful and hating, what? One another. That sounds great, doesn't it? Sounds like a formula for chaos. Well, that's what we were before Christ, right? The next verse says, But after that, the kindness and love of God, our Savior, toward man, what? Appeared. Not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to His mercy, He saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost. Paul wants us first to remember where we came from. If we reflect or think about how God has changed your life for the better, we will start showing gentleness to all people. Because that is exactly what the Lord Jesus Christ did for you and I. We need to quit looking down on people and instead give them the message that saves and that makes someone whole. Look at the example our Apostle Paul tells you here in 1 Timothy here, verse 14 and 15. 1 Timothy verse 14 and 15. One of the first faithful sayings Paul tells you, it's to the left. 1 Timothy 1, verse 14 and 15. And the grace of our Lord was exceeding abundant with faith and love, which is where? In Christ Jesus. This is a faithful saying. Actually, I'm sorry, go to verse 13. Who was, he's talking about himself here, okay? Verse 12, And I thank Christ Jesus our Lord, who hath enabled me, for that he counted me faithful, putting me into the ministry. And then he talks about who, he, who Paul was before he got saved. He was a, a, before a blasphemer, a persecutor, injurious, but what does he say? I obtained mercy because I did it what? Ignorantly in unbelief. If someone's ever wronged you, that's maybe an unsaved individual has maybe wronged you, or maybe and some of these individuals, make, uh, individuals in our pol you know, politicians, or uh, individuals in authority, or an individual above you, or maybe your neighbor, I don't care who it is, if they wronged you, look what Paul did. And again, Paul, before he was saved on Damascus Road, was a murderer, folks. He was throwing women and children in jail because they believed in Jesus. Okay? This is before he got saved. And what does he say? I did it what? Ignorantly in what? Unbelief. Individuals who have wronged you, they're doing it ignorantly in what? Unbelief. Okay? And so we're to, we're, we are to give, again, quit looking down on those individuals because they need the Lord in their Life, And we need to show them grace for them to see God's grace. Okay? So verse 3 gives us a picture of our old man before you accepted Christ as your Savior. Verse 4 to 7, okay, talks about everything you have is because of the Lord Jesus Christ. It's because of Him. Verse 4 and 5, we just read that. God displayed His kindness and love for us by giving us a merciful washing of regeneration, meaning a spiritual new birth and renewal by the Holy Spirit. Okay, as believers in Christ, when you accepted Christ as your Savior, the Holy, you are identified, you can say baptized, into the body of Christ. The Holy Spirit identifies you into the body. It's a spiritual baptism. That's why it says, washing of regeneration and renewing of who? The Holy Ghost. It's a spiritual new birth and renewal by the Holy Spirit. We were unclean, and now we are clean by the blood of who? Jesus Christ. Verse 6 tells you, which He shed on us abundantly through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Verse 7, that being justified by His grace, we should be made heirs according to the hope of eternal life. Upon belief, you were indwelt with the Holy Spirit of God, which is a guaranteed seal in setting you apart as a child of God. Verse 7 goes on to tell you 
that you have been declared righteous by His grace. That's the word justified, meaning righteous. It being justified by His grace. And then made heirs according to the hope of eternal life. We are sons and daughters of the King of kings and Lord of lords. Guaranteed with full assurance, life with Him all eternity. Think about that. Heirs with Him. You are heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. Everything we have is because of the Lord Jesus Christ. He saw our need and He became sin for us who knew no sin that we might be made the righteous of God in Him. So let's allow, let's our, let our appreciation walk be seen. We read it, you appreciate it, we appreciate everything from God's Word to here, but what was the, uh, the, 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 what, the Bible trivia today? Knowledge does what? Puffeth up. Okay? Knowledge got to go from here to here to your feet to walk. Appreciate the things that we have through Christ and let people see that. Let people see your appreciation walk. So we don't need to forget. We don't forget our behaviors do matter in this world. And we don't forget, and again, don't forget everything we have is, is because of the Lord Jesus Christ. We need to let our light shine through our appreciation walk. And then I will say this. Don't forget to watch the ripple effect. Don't forget to watch the ripple effect. Verse 8 says, this is a faithful saying. It's faithful. You can count on it. These things, I will that thou affirm constantly that they which have believed in God might be careful to maintain good works. These things are good and profitable unto who? Men. Unto all men. See, a ripple effect, let me tell you this, a ripple effect occurs when an initial disturbance to a system propagates outward to disturb an increasingly larger portion of the system. Like ripples expanding across the water when an object is dropped into it. If you saw today in all the rain, you see puddles and all the rains coming down, right? I love this picture here because it's not just one ripple. As a member of the body of Christ, there's many members in what? One body. And you and I, God is using you and I in our, in our secular jobs and in our families. And each of you can create a ripple effect for the good. See, do you think Daniel, a couple examples. Do you think Daniel was happy being in Babylon? Do you think he was happy he wanted to be there? But when you see how he, he allowed God to use him, there was a ripple effect that changed the course for the nation of Israel. Do you think Esther? I don't think Esther, she did not want to particularly, she didn't like being picked as queen. She didn't want to marry him, did he? Did she at all? No, she didn't want to marry him. But in that passage there in Esther, it says, for such a time as it was for her, Such a time it is for you and I, as members of the body of Christ. God has set you and I apart upon belief. You're His child and you're His ambassador for Christ. You and I, no matter of the profession, the community we live in, your marriage, your family, or your friends, you can make a ripple. You can make a ripple effect that can and will last for all eternity. Galatians 6, 8 and 9 tells you that, For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption, but he that soweth what? The Spirit shall of the Spirit reap what? Life everlasting. How do you want to make and leave a legacy? Did you ever ask yourself that question? It's not about rich and the fame. It's about the Lord Jesus Christ and for all eternity. It's about making a difference in someone's life and being that man or woman God has called you to be. Life is a gift, and it's quick, so don't forget it. As we celebrate July 4th and reflect on our freedom, let me leave you this quote that was made by Dennis and Barbara Rainey. The choice is yours. What kind of legacy will you leave? The world is full of people erecting monuments to themselves, 
but leaving nothing of real value behind. Why not determine with God's help that you will leave behind a legacy that will last forever? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you that it does convict us, Father. We thank you for the challenge and, and, how, and, and, and just in general how we're to conduct our business, how we're to live our life. Father, help us to be that channel of blessing, that light to the lost. Help us to uh, be bold in our faith, to share the glorious gospel that Christ died on the cross uh, for their, uh, in everybody's sins, and that he, and through his death, his burial, and resurrection, they can have forgiveness of sins and eternal life. Father, we thank you for it. Help us to appreciate that. Help us never to forget the freedom we do have here in the United States but to also live our faith out. And Father, we do look forward to the time that you do come back for the body. But until then, use us mightily. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Thank you, Pastor Eric. We're going to close our service by standing and turning to hymn 783, the battle hymn of the Republic, 783. Please stand. <laughs>